So welcome back to my channel for tech career, data, and machine learning. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over you know a little slightly more complex SQL uh, functions with Excel demonstration. And today we're gonna focus on conditional aggregation and window function. So the first function I'm gonna cover is a count if function, and you can do exactly the same thing in SQL, and I'll show you how to do that. So here we have an Excel sheet of orders tab that contains order ID, customer ID, employee ID, order date, and shipper ID. And I'm going to have a link down below in the description for access of a SQL practice that you can run, you know, some simple um, SQL queries to make sure that you practice and understand these concepts. So make sure that you check it out. Um, so here we see that we're count if the B column, which is our customer ID, and if it's greater than uh, greater than or equal to 70. So we're essentially counting all the customer IDs that meets the criteria of greater than 70. And we can see the result is 8 here. And you can do exactly the same thing by, uh, you know, in SQL by doing a case one statement, which is essentially the same thing as an if statement. So you're essentially uh, taking any customer ID that meets the criteria that's greater than 70 and then printing it out. So in Excel, you can think of it as like adding an extra column next to customer ID and checking that with an if logic, you know, if the customer ID is greater than 70, then print your customer ID. And then else you will have blank, which is null. And then you will count that additional column you're doing and then name it as something else that's more meaningful, such as customer 70 count. Uh, you kind of have to remember yourself that it's that customer ID that has greater than 70 and from your orders table. It's very important to un remember that you have to do else is null and end so that you have a complete uh, if statement. And to make sure that you only, you know, you always do else null when you're trying to do a count of a customer ID. Because, for example, if you do else zero, then zero will still be counted as an ID. So then you're going to add have an additional count, which is going to make it nine. So you want to make sure you don't do that and to make sure that you have null instead. Because we're doing counting number of rows, not necessarily you know, counting distinct um, customer ID, then it's fine if we just do, you know, label it as label each row as one and zero and then just sum it up because it will give you the same results. So next I'm gonna cover the count distinct. Um, but in this situation that we're changing the filter to greater than 50, and then you can, you know, and then based on reading your customer ID. You might want to just uh, looking at distinct uh, customer IDs that you have instead of instead of double counting like the 65, right? So you can do the same thing by count distinct and with the same case statement of customer ID greater than zero, then customer ID else null. Make sure that you put null for the else. So it's like other everything else will be blank, not zero, because zero will be counted as one of the customer ID. So make sure you don't do that. Now move on to you know using the sum if function in Excel. So uh, this the case I'm giving here is isn't particularly useful because you're checking, uh, you know your customer ID greater than or equal to seventy, and then you're summing up all the customer ID, which is not very practical or useful in any business cases. So uh, the more realistic case will be you know having a case one still checking the same condition. Uh, or you know other conditions that you have, then have uh, then the order count. So in this case, order count will be the number of orders that uh, a customer purchased, and then else zero. So because we're doing a sum if, then having a zero is perfectly fine. Or you can do also null, which will give you the same results. Um, so when you do some case one of your criteria, then the column that you're interested in is sum uh, summing up uh, else zero or null and and from the table. So this way you can get you know your sum if function based on the criteria and then get your sum. Before jumping into a window function, please make sure to subscribe to learn more about data, tech career, and machine learning. And also leave a comment below about why you're interested in learning SQL. And also please like the video if you're you think that this is good content. So now we're gonna go over the window function. 
Uh, I know that window function sounds kind of complicated, so I'm going to show it, you know, demonstrate it in Excel first so that you understand why would we even use a window function. So for me, I think the most commonly used uh, way of using window function is that you're trying to figure out, you know, for each for a particular person, what's the gap or how many days does it take between their you know, or like between their order dates or like how many, like for, for example, in this case, I'm talking about for employee ID, I want to know, you know, how long does it take an employee to handle each order? So that's why you want to, you know, you want to know the current order date and then also the next order date so that you can do a date diff function to uh, subtract, you know, to know the, the number of days between the two dates. And that's very useful in SQL. So how would you be able to, you know, create an extra column E called next to order date uh, based on your existing order date uh, column D? So that's the part I were focusing on. And how would you be able to do that? You'll be able to write a lead function. So you, lead is essentially taking the next row for the current row, right? So you do lead order date, parentheses order date, and over partition by employee ID. And the reason why you're doing that is that because you want to make sure that you only capture the uh, next date based on uh, different employees because that you don't want to uh, get the next order date for all the employees, then it's not really you know, the time difference between uh, for one order to the other order for each employee, right? And then you want to do order by order date, uh, ascending order, so you will do ascending order because you're trying to uh, sort your order date and then take the next date that's for this employee ID and what it is. And then so for any order date that doesn't have the following order date will be showing null in your result. So just keep that in mind. The opposite of taking you know, the next row of your current column, which is the lead window function, uh, it will be the you know, opposite of that would be the lag window function, which is taking the previous row of the current row from your column. So you can do that by lag order date or over partition by employee ID order by order date ascending order. So you need to make sure that you do ascending order for lag um, because then otherwise, like if you do descending order and lag, which will be essentially the same thing as lead window function with order date uh, ascending. So you want to make sure that you're not, you know, doing the same thing twice. Otherwise, it's, it's window function is a pretty cost costly function. So you want to make sure you don't do that. So the next one I'm going to cover is how do you have, you know, have a column of row number based on a sort sorting a specific column. For example, here I'm sorting from the oldest to newest for the order date and then adding a row number for uh, each row based on, you know, the sorting. So it's very useful in this case when you want to know, you know, the fifth place of uh, what's the fifth place. Uh, the fifth oldest uh, order that was purchased or in business cases that it's very useful when you want to instead of knowing you know who made the most like what's the highest uh, dollar amount purchase for each order you might want to look at you know maybe the third place which is a very common interview question that a lot of people ask for a row number window function which is in this use case for you know instead of looking at a first place I want to look at the third place or fifth place or a tenth place, and you will be able to accomplish that by using a row number. And that's the row number that we added to column F. And how would you be able to do that? It would be you know row number over. So because that we're not adding a row number for a particular uh, you know customer or employee, so we don't need to do a partition by. But for example, if you want to know you know. Uh, the second order for each customer, then you will have to add partition by. So in this case, we're not doing that. So we're not having partition by, but we'll just straight up have order by order date ascending order, which will accomplish the same thing that was demonstrated in the Excel sheet. Very similar concept to row number. Uh, and the next one we're going to cover is rank. So how is rank different from you know your row number? So essentially, they will almost always be the same, 
uh, if you have you don't have any you know any of the the column that you're sorting has the same value. But if it has the same value, for example, on row fourteen and fifteen, they're both on July nineteenth of nineteen ninety six, so they're both ranked as thirteen. And you can see that they're both ranked as thirteen. But then when you choose uh, the next one, because you already skipped fourteen, right? Like you have thirteen, thirteen. Uh, but then you have two of them, so the next one will be fifteen instead. And that's the major difference between rank and row number. And this is also a very commonly asked interview question is, what's the difference between a row number window function and a rank window function? So very similar concept, but now we're talking about dense rank. Uh, but you wonder like, what's the difference between dense rank and rank? The key difference is actually, you know, you, for ranking for the same, if the two rows has the same value, you will still show both as uh, in, this, in this example, we should both show row number four and five as three, as a third uh, third oldest ranked, right? But uh, you can tell from the next one that it will the next row after that, of, after those two um, rank threes, it will still show as four. But in the rank, so dense rank will show four, but in rank it will show five because that it think, uh, rank thinks that it's already replaced four. So then it will not show four anymore because you have two over three. But in dense rank, it will still show the next one as four. So it depends on your situation, your use cases, that you may, might want to use dense rank instead of rank. So quickly cover what I have talked about today. We talked about conditional aggregation, which includes you know, the count if function, which is using count case when your criteria, then your customer ID, else, no, and, and then that's how you'll do a count if. And then also you had a sum if, so you can do uh, some uh, parentheses, case when, and then have your criteria and then cut summation of a different column. So it's really cool. And then we also co covered a uh, lead and lag window function, which is very useful to calculate the days between uh, two different dates uh, because you want to see, you know, what's the gap between the two dates or what's the gap between the usage or the timestamps, which is very useful. And then we also cover row number, which is essentially, um, you know, count, like assigning each row with a number based on your uh, based on how you uh, do it, based on your partition by and order by. And then we also talk about rank and dense rank, which rank and dense rank will show you uh, if two rows shows the same value, then they'll both ranked at the same with the same uh, rank 